Here we go. Uh, this is the Porn Stars Are People podcast. I'm Dan Frigolette. I'm here with Saya Song. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for uh, for doing this. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I know uh, it's not always um, people's favorite things to do to go on podcast. Everybody's got a podcast now. It seems like <laughs> so it doesn't like you don't need yeah, like it qualifications is the thing. to have a podcast anymore. Um, it's just like everyone has a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've been in experiences where they, they bring people on and then they sort of not necessarily demean them, but they're just like very creepy to them <laughs> yes, on a podcast. I've, I've had that happen. Yeah. What happened to you? Um, I mean, I thought it was a, a harmless podcast. Is that, what, know, is, that what, unless, is that what it was called? It was called the harmless podcast? <laughs> no, I forgot what it was called, but, um, you know, someone... This someone that I trusted set me up with this guy yeah. so I was like okay cool you know I'll do this podcast and I like talking and not just not just having sex that's right <laughs> um, I also have a mouth and a brain <laughs> but the guy just started kind of like making jokes about hitting on me uh, that, that involved hitting on me yeah. and and I laughed it off at first but he, he kind of continued and it just got awkward because I wasn't I wasn't biting, and, and I he, wasn't playing and along with And he, like, didn't know what to do after that? No, like he, he really didn't. And like, then he thought this was going to turn into, like, something? I don't know. He continued to hit on me on Twitter, and I was just like, hey, you just need to chill out there, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you th- I, um, so how many how many listens did, the, did, did this episode get? I'm really not sure. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't. I guess I don't pay attention That's to stuff funny. like that. <laughs> so, uh, here we are. So I'm in LA. I've been here a couple of days. What is? Uh, what's, what are the secrets of LA? What am I supposed to be doing here? You know, I'm really still figuring out the secrets to LA myself. <laughs> I've had the worst weather luck. I was in. I was in Vegas last week. 65 all week. It's 90 right now. While I was in Vegas, it was 90 here, and now it's 65 here. And it's cloudy the whole time. I'm bringing Syracuse weather where, with wherever where I go. <laughs> it's not good. Well, you can stop because <laughs> I moved to LA for the nice weather, mm-hmm. and I'm just not loving the gray skies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, last so last night like there was like sun for like a minute, but it was 4:30. <laughs> uh, so I was like, I don't care, and I went and I and I got uh, I got some food, and I just went and sat on the beach, committed, and took my shirt off to try to get some some sun. Uh, but it was, <laughs> it was eventually very cold. <laughs> yeah, it, it it gets really cold by the beach. You can't too, go to you Vegas know? and L.A. and then go back to Central New York with no tan. People are gonna be like, "Dude, what's what's going on? <laughs> where, where were you? Where were you really? Like, where were you going? <laughs> you lie. Where did you really go? So, <laughs> I don't have the good luck on this one. I've been I've been I've been having pretty good luck with parking though. Yeah. So far, good. Today, good. today I had today I had to do meters, but so far I've been finding like weird, like little up, like because I don't know the New York thing. You kind of whip around until you find a spot, and then, uh, and then, and then you, and then you cram that thing in there as fast as possible. <laughs> so I've been, I've been good at that. So that's good. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out um, what else uh, uh, I'm supposed to do in LA. It seems like uh, the street. I, what happened was I ended up uh, performing across the street from the place that where this is open space LA. Uh, randomly on Monday, that's that's uh, that's where I had a show. So then now, uh, in LA, I've only been to West Hollywood and then wherever we are now, and then and then basically I think uh, Del Del Mar Vista, I think is what I'm saying. So I've seen like the smallest parts of LA. Like I like I have like I was hoping to like be able to see everything, do the whole thing. Now I've, now I've seen this much. Yeah, that's not very much. Um Gosh, I wish I could point you. In, in, <laughs> so in where, good, where do you live in LA? I, I stay in the valley, in, in Porn Valley. In Porn Valley. Porn Valley. This sounds exciting. <laughs> uh, it's not as exciting as as it sounds. It, it, it's actually, it gets hotter in the valley. Okay. So when it's when it's really hot, it's, it it's just hotter. It just soaks up it the... It just stays there. And, and hangs. And hangs out in, in the little valley. And then... And then you go, and then you're like, okay, it's really hot. Let's go to the beach. And then you get to the beach, and it's like really it's freezing. cold. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's what somebody's trying to tell on, me. LA. They, they <laughs> said, uh, they said East Coast has warm water from the ocean. You, we, we, you guys just have cold. Yeah, cold ocean. that's that's also a thing. I'm kind of scared of the ocean too. Okay. I grew up in Michigan, where we have lakes. You know, inner interstate lakes yeah. where there's not a lot of waves or anything um, like that. Creatures. No, yeah, no scary sharks yeah. or anything like that so it's pretty safe so wait okay wait so where <laughs> where is this in michigan my, my parents uh my parents 
got married when they were living in Grand Rapids. Okay, I live. I'm I'm further east. So this is what they do. So this is what I find out. In in Michigan, they do the hand thing, right? Yeah. They show you a hand, and they go, "Okay, this is where I am on the hand." So Grand Rapids would be over here, basically, and I'm basically just like over here. So where's where's Marshall on the hand? That's a, that's a really good question. <laughs> yeah, cause I, only, I only know uh, so much Michigan. There's like dead yeah. center Michigan is Marshall. Yeah, I think that's just kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's, wh- that's what it of, was. I'm kind of from the middle of nowhere They had tetherball. Well. You ever <laughs> play tetherball? Yeah. That was a Midwest thing. They don't have that everywhere really? else. I've never, no. yeah. <laughs> I've, like I just I, I just had like a weird tetherball memory of, uh, of, <laughs> of being a child of Ohio and we played tetherball. Uh, they don't have that. East Coast. You know, n- you know what cornhole is? No, what is cornhole? Wait, like, the like beanbag toss. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, they I guess they have different names for it in yeah, different areas. Um, I think it's just called cornhole. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm not so I'm not for any game that is only fun if you're drunk. That's kind of. Like, <laughs> well, I'm you know pretty I mean? sure that's like. That's what that game is. That's like all of Michigan. Just getting drunk. Life, yeah. yeah. You know what? And that's th- that's kind of the problem is I don't drink, so yeah. my social life was really limited in Michigan after I stopped drinking. Yeah. So, okay, so this is my one of my favorite slash uh, least favorite things. Comedians, we just say a thing is a favorite when it's the worst. We just go, <laughs> I fucking love this thing. It's so bad. Um, this thing where people, they only uh, get heated and ask you follow-up questions if you don't do a thing. Like, if you do do whatever, mm-hmm. they're like, they're like, like, it's normal. But if you're like, what, what do you mean you don't drink? <laughs> what do you mean you don't do heroin? Why don't you do heroin? Like you need a reason to not do the crazy thing. They're like, you don't eat gluten. What's your deal? What's I know. wrong with you? Oh my gosh. Like when I was vegan for okay. a time being, yeah. man, people just they're not into cannot it. wrap their they heads don't around love that. It. And you know, now that I'm not vegan, it's it's a little it's a little difficult to wrap my head around. Around <laughs> just because being vegan or around being not vegan? Just because I have, I definitely have my reasons for not being vegan, which are, I was very hungry. I was hungry all the I time. I was very hungry, <laughs> man. It, it is, it is a dedicated lifestyle, yeah. and uh, when you're a single person on a budget, it can be difficult to sure. do, and very time consuming. Yeah. Uh, well, what were the reasons to be vegan? Well, there's lots of ethical and moral reasons to okay, do so it, but that, you know, you're in, that, you're in that group. Yeah, for sure. And that, but then at the same time, it's it, for me, it sort of felt, felt like a futile effort because, man, we're just never gonna change the world into right. being vegan. Right. So <laughs> it's what, never yeah, gonna well, happen. So, yeah. So it comes down to this this argument. It's like, where, what are the, what are the circumstances in which you would eat? A, a creature and I, there was a buddy of mine in college and he said if he was able to uh, kill an animal with his bare hands Ooh. in a fight to the death <laughs> then he would uh, then he would eat that animal uh, to honor it yeah. uh, which is basically you know what happens on like shows like naked and afraid yeah I'm not <laughs> but I can't think of an an and he said bare hands so I can't think of an animal that I can win in a fight against, maybe a chicken. Yeah, I don't. I don't even think so. Because you have to. You know, chickens are fast. They There's are a whole scene and in, in Rocky and they chase can, the chicken. I mean, you ever see those talons? I took care of my aunt's chickens for a brief period. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been in a fight with a chicken? <laughs> no, but the male chicken he liked to fly at the fence and like try to get at you oh, through yeah? the fence. So if you weren't careful, you you get might get you poked? might get clawed oh, at, like funny. your legs or something. Oh, that's crazy. So wait, have you been have you been clawed? You have you have or have not been clawed by a chicken? Um, no, nope. I've I've escaped <laughs> near near uh, near chicken death. Claw, clawless, <laughs> near, nearly chickened to death. So yeah, so that's uh, so uh, I'm in a position now where I'm uh, I'm intermittent fasting, so I don't eat until three o'clock. Oh, how's that going for you? It's <laughs> it's fine. I like the way you said that though. Yeah, how does that go, an idiot? How's that that sounds for? terrible. I, no, I've heard about I've heard about that, and I just like to. Eat a Eating lot, is great. Man. So I eat. So I eat. I eat hard <laughs> from three to like midnight, and it's great. Um, it, you're just giving your body time to do some of the things maintenance-wise that it needs to do to not and not making it have to digest all yeah. the time. That's that's sort of the goal. Yeah, I have a small stomach though, so eating a lot at once. Yeah. Well, so that's so then. Th- well, you're not eating a lot at once. It's just that you only eat for, for those eight hours. 
No, the the thing is, it hasn't changed my life very much. Okay. As a comedian, I'm probably waking up, uh, you know, on a good day if I have if I have the schedule and I'm out on the road and 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 uh, having to travel in the morning. Uh, I like to sleep till eleven or noon. So I'm only I'm only dealing with shower, drink some water, maybe have a coffee before I can eat at three. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not like a huge life change. That's a good point. It's not that bad. <laughs> Everybody, you know, because well, so when do you eat now? Do you breakfast, you breakfast, lunch, and dinner? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite? What's your what's your go-to meal? What's your favorite meal? Uh, I like breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Eggs, bacon. Um. Throw it on an un- English muffin. I've been trying to avoid the heavy stuff like that in the morning. Yeah. Right now, I've actually been doing um, a, a banana and peanut butter every morning. Peanut butter and banana. Classic, classic combo. It's pretty good. So, <laughs> okay, so what else? So so you said you, so how long have you been in LA then? Um, I actually just moved back out here. Um, it's been about a month. I was traveling back and forth between Michigan and no LA shit. for like two years. So, okay, so what's your, what, what, what's your favorite mode of travel? I mean, you fly, that, that you obviously fly. I like driving because uh, I like to do things at my own pace. Yeah. I don't like to, I hate flying because I hate the crowds and like being stuck in a tiny cabin with a bunch of strangers yeah. and. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting worse as a person for <laughs> judging or if it's just getting worse. I used to, it used to be pretty easy. I, I'd be pretty okay with everything. I'd somehow get lucky with the people I was sitting next to and it's cool. Sometimes you talk, whatever, whatever. But basically I just get in the seat as soon as I turn the engine on, I pass out, and then I'll like I'll sleep through takeoff, and then sometimes I'll sleep through landing, and then I'll, you know I'll wake up when people are like getting all their shit. Um, so, but the last the trip out here, I went I was, so I went to Vegas, and then I drove from Vegas to here, and I, I mean I hated everybody. <laughs> I mean I was just looking around, I was like, well, how, how, you know, I just, and 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 then even when I boarded, didn't make any sense, and I was like getting really upset with everybody uh, all around. Um, and we're back. Sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, the producer of the podcast, me, is a moron. Um, I forgot to replace <laughs> the batteries. Okay, so we were just talking about uh, your your um, love and obsession, and, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, of Keanu <laughs> Reeves. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and, and, uh, and John Wick 2, which you just saw. Yeah, oh. it was it was good. I liked it. You know, I'm glad I went and saw it in the theater. So he, he, uh, he had, you said he had this whole California boy, um, (laughs) kind of dumb thing for a while. (laughs) Yeah. You know, every time he opens his mouth, you get the the surfer boy from like Bill and Ted. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he still kind of has that a little bit, but now that he's older and he's just such a badass, he he can get away with, he really, he really like, um, like the one liners and came into his own when they, when they gave him matrix. Yeah, definitely. I he, still he love the, the Matrix. Hang, and he gets to hang kind of in that zone because we're like, oh, he's uh, he's the Matrix guy. He's <laughs> he can do that thing. But, you know, here's another thing is how old is Keanu Reeves now? And he cannot grow a full beard. Yeah, that always bums me <laughs> out. Now, as, as a guy who can grow a beard, right now I'm actually like uh, I'm, I'm like over bearded. Like because I just I uh, you can only travel with so much stuff. I was going to two weeks. I, I didn't <laughs> really know how serious it was going to get. So, like, I didn't know if I do I go buy, go buy a beard trimmer, go pay a guy to trim my beard, which <laughs> I'm not sure I'm comfortable with. You know, because I, I don't, I, I can't, you know, I do the, I do the trim it down just to, uh, like, a level. So, I can, I, my stuff fills in, but then you, like, just don't make Leonardo DiCaprio grow the beard. Like, don't make <laughs> exactly. uh, Mark Wahlberg grow, like, don't give him the role where he needs to have the beard because it, ju- it does. It's a weird look. He's it's just patchy, right? It is. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, at least is. I don't know. In my opinion, I'm not even a dude. I just think <laughs> if, I just think if if John Wick was a real person, uh, he would just not grow a beard. Like he w- like he knows that his beard doesn't come in all the like I got a buddy whose yeah. dad can't grow facial hair and he doesn't like he's like he's got like a little bit like <laughs> like he's basically got like a little Hitler thing that he <laughs> grow and he doesn't grow. It's not like he's not gonna grow that. No. You just don't grow that. You just keep it clean the rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, when your when your facial hair grows in like Joe in dirt, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you probably should just shave it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I wonder if anybody has that problem uh, downstairs. Do you think anybody just has like like pa- like a patchy bush and then they always just and, ah, and then they have to shave it forever? That's a really good question. I would like or just like patchy the armpit ladies. Hairs? 
to weigh in on that. I don't know. Mail in. Uh, we only we only take uh, questions via uh, snail mail. <laughs> mail it in, and then in two two years when we get the when we get it, we'll uh, we'll address this question. Show show us pictures of your patchy bush. Patchy bush. <laughs> it's a hashtag. It's the uh, the trending hashtag of the day. Pash, uh, patchy bush. Actually, let's uh, let's do that. Let's. Uh, are you big on Twitter? Do you love Twitter? Do you like? Do you I care? do love Twitter. Twitter is. Very important in this business. Yeah, that's true. You guys, you guys have a shit ton of followers on Twitter. It's you it's know, it impressive. happens. It grows every day. My my Instagram followers have also been recently growing. Yeah, I, I got into a conversation that I wasn't equipped for recently, where somebody knows all the stats, knows all the things about both social medias, and they just started going off about stories and which 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 one has the you know has the more viewer on the stories and instagram hmm. has the bigger viewers of the stories and i was like i didn't i didn't, I didn't want to get this far into the thing because wow. they were like giving me all the tips of what to do i was like i just want to get through life just i wish i knew those <laughs> tips <laughs> she's like taking <laughs> seminars okay i was gonna see if there's any fun hashtags on the twitter there's not there's a memorial day weekend oh. which i don't know is that i don't we're in california so people don't really like barbecue here or i don't know if i don't know the right people or um it's just like everybody that i've talked to so far is just like Hanging, they're not really doing anything. Yeah, I don't. Th- it doesn't seem like too big of a thing out here. It's, it's pretty sh- big in Michigan. It's though. so big in like the suburbs. Yeah, because, because life they is awful. Yeah, they just so anything to celebrate. You yeah. know, people people go crazy over Cinco de Mayo in yeah. Michigan, and they're not even Mexican. Yes, <laughs> white people are the worst about Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, uh, and St. Patty's Day, St. even Patrick's if they're not Day. Irish. You I know, anything about drinking, honestly. I live in Hoboken, and um, so they have this big thing every year. It's the Hoboken St. Patrick's Day, and what happens is um, they, they, they shut the town down, and they do this whole thing, but it's it's two weeks before real St. Patrick's Day because it's Hoboken and they know they can't compete with actual New York City. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just like, look, come have fun, but like, obviously we're not the real city. They're just like letting people know how bad we are. So they've done that now. They do that with the Memorial Day too. They had the Memorial Day parade already because they just can't compete with real Memorial Day. <laughs> and for the t- all the things, they just, ha- they just basically like, we're a shittier town. We got to do it. <laughs> I mean, they're trying. <laughs> so, Pirates Life is the other is the other trending hashtag, which is the Pirates oh, of the Caribbean movie. I'm so nice. not caught up on what's happening with I'm that. I, it's been a while, but you know, I like them. I like Johnny Depp. I don't understand what's happening with Johnny Depp. Uh, as long as he's sexy, it doesn't yeah, really that's, matter. That's, that's kind. That's this is what. <laughs> so, there's a couple white boys that have that have uh, um, transcended. Uh, all of society for women it r- that it doesn't really matter what they're doing. Yeah. Like the Justin Timberlake thing was hilarious to me. So when Justin, Justin Timberlake they caught him cheating uh, like like a year ago. Uh, I love how I, l- I love how I love how like you know, it's not even like uh, people don't even remember it. So usually you catch <laughs> a white guy cheating and you feel so bad for his wife and he's, <laughs> such a, he's a philanderer and like whatever. Every girl was like. Oh, is he going to leave Jessica Biel? Like, every girl thought she, they still had a shot with Justin Timberlake. <laughs> like, they were like, is he going to leave Jessica Biel? What's going to happen? And then when and then when they found out that he's just going to put a baby in her, because that was their deal. He cheated on her, now he's going to put a baby in her. <laughs> she's like, at least don't embarrass me in the streets. Um, put a baby in me, so whatever. Because she knows she's not going to do any better. She was on 7th Heaven. That was her heyday. And so yeah. girls are just like Jessica, like they're shitting on Jessica Biel now. They're like, like I would have cheated on her too. Like, what are you talking about? She was in that Blade movie. She was really hot in that oh, one. The, that the one. third one, I yeah, think it, it was. Yeah. I'm not caught up. I, I, <laughs> I was a huge Wesley Snipes fan. I don't really? know why I never got into the Blade movies. Yeah. I was really into vampires growing up. Yeah. Like as a teenager. Apparently we all thing. were because now it's like a trillion dollar industry it is i mean i'm not into the vampires that they have nowadays i don't know what the hell happened to vampires yeah. so, wait, wait. so perfect like vampire this. for you is, is is either what movie or who or, or describe the vampire well i mean I, I i grew up watching buffy the vampire sure, slayer sure. you know the series yeah, so do. so they were they were still kind of badass vampires. They still like yeah. drank blood and they yeah. couldn't like go out in the sun or they'd burst into flames. They didn't sparkle or anything right. like well, that. Twilight. Yes. Well, I guess I guess the switch is that um, the vampires were still the bad guy in Buffy. Yes. She, I mean, she, or she might have. Ba- did she bang? A, I think she banged a vampire. Yeah, she she banged a couple of them, <laughs> but they were always like the the bad boy. And and you know, now that I honestly, when I watch that show now as an adult, I'm like, man, it's no wonder I have such a f- <laughs> fucked up version of what of what 
relationships should be like yeah. because I romanticize Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is basically just a teenage soap opera. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. we all know that those are not ideal <laughs> portrayals of relationships. And a, guy, and a guy who is completely unavailable because uh, during the day, completely unavailable. Yeah, during the day, he's not. He's not. He's. I mean, the equivalent is he would be with his wife, but he's not with his wife. He's. He's. He's with um the. You know the the dark depths of I don't know whatever you like a coffin. <laughs> he was not only that, but like Buffy's boyfriend was like the the angel, the, the angel, yeah, right? this yeah, guy? angel. He was the ultimate show? unavailable because if they had sex and and stuff, and he ha- felt happiness, he would turn evil. And oh really? Yes, yes, oh, that was so the funny. thing. So she couldn't bang him. <laughs> no, it happened once, and he like he, went he evil? turned evil, and, and then she yeah, had to decide whether and she's gonna and kill she him. Had, yeah, she had to kill him oh, and everything. Wow. It was so did dramatic. She yeah, oh, she wow, did. Spoiler she alert! <laughs> but if you haven't seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, <laughs> yeah, she yeah. sent him to hell and everything. Wow. And I'm like, damn, that's like my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's um. Th- and that yeah, isn't that that was how uh, that was kind of that was a little bit how Twilight was like the sparkle thing. But I think I- if there was something about if he ba- like like he w- he didn't he wasn't he didn't want to bang her for I don't know what the reason in Twilight was though. I'm trying to I'm, try- <laughs> I'm trying to like I don't know. I didn't really I didn't really actually watch Twilight. I yeah. Uh, so I got to that point. So I, I was like I was like a little a little too old to be in the theater when this was happening. So I was like I got to the point where I was like finally I was like I got to see what the fuck is co- what this is. I got to like. <laughs> catch up see what the what the hype is and see if they're right or not and you know uh i i enjoyed it it was good i was team the werewolf guy whichever one that was oh yeah the what werewolf was what was that guy's name i don't know team edward team something i don't know i uh i i am com- i will say confidently that that listeners of this podcast probably are not <laughs> Twilight, no, huge probably. Twilight fans. Probably not. Confidently, <laughs> I'll say that. So then nobody's yelling at me, going, "It's uh, whatever his name is, you idiot." Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, so th- and that's a weird one. So right, but uh, d- to have to to like consider banging a werewolf that was never like they never made werewolf like like even in like Buffy they made vampire sexy, but there was never like a oh, sexy werewolf. Actually, there was because oh shit, I'm wrong. yeah, <laughs> her best friend was a sexy werewolf. No, in Buffy? but he she she started dating a guy who ended up being a werewolf. Yeah, here's what I so here's, here's it was basically it was um Seth Green's character. It basically just sounds like Twilight ripped off. Twilight uh, like probably the did rip off later, like Buffy, like a hundred percent. That's funny. I think, bu- well, I mean, yeah, Buffy was definitely like the original vampire werewolf yeah. teen drama. Now I go back to the movie. I I, oh, I wanted yeah, the, the, the movie the with movie uh, the movie Buffy. I wanted her so what's bad. What's her name? Christie's. Um, Swanson. Swanson. Is it yeah, Christy Swanson? Christy Swanson. Is that right? I wanted her so bad. Yeah, she and was, was a like hottie. I was like 11. It's like one of the things that got me through. Uh, got me through the, the the times. I was actually just thinking about how much. Uh, like how I watched Baywatch in the morning when I was like 11 <laughs> and how like uh, Pamela Anderson was my end all be all to like my puberty and it was just weird uh, to think that I watched that in the living room like my parents were just like walking around like I must have been just like just like just had like a little baby boner like the whole time <laughs> like, I don't understand <laughs> what happened because oh, I didn't have my own TV you know what that's my first p- and th- <laughs> this is me like 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 psychoanalyzing myself, but that was <laughs> I, all. I, I saved up a bunch of money to buy a TV for myself. That's probably what it was. I just needed You're a like TV I in just my room need to watch Baywatch, so I can go jerk off private. by myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> just a weird uh, suppressed memory now. Because the new baby, because I mean, because I'm running around here and there's new Baywatch everywhere. I mean, I used to make my my Barbies have sex. Yeah. So you know that's that's a thing. I chewed Barbie feet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Barbie why. feet. Yeah, eh? you got a yeah, foot, foot, foot fetish there. Oh, I thought you were gonna be on board. You just, but you just judged me. I've <laughs> never chewed a human foot. Okay, <laughs> just, just a Barbie. No, foot. why not? I it's have a good cute texture, feet. Yeah. I bet they're very, very chewable. Show them up. Show them up. Well, they're in. You're wearing the Palladians right now. Right now. Um, yeah, you're wearing the the whole combat boot. I do. Look, these are really, really. Are you killing it, right? You're very. Are you what? You're very adorable. You're doing. You're doing. You get the whole thing going. Yesterday they had uh, so I was gonna ask you this. Uh, have you ever waited in line? Like, have you ever camped out for anything crazy? Are you gonna show me your foot? Is are we yeah, going this far? You said you said oh you shit. wanted to see it. All right, oh, fuck. oh, I'm I'm actually showing you the foot with my with the birthmark. On you have a birthmark <laughs> foot. I have a birthmark. Well, everybody likes weird shit. Yeah, yeah. what is it? That's a, that's the birthmark. Yeah, this is oh, my wow. birthmark. It just um, it looks like you just. It's got actually really interesting because yeah. you know people always think that it's a bruise. Yeah, it just for lo- it looks like reasons. it just happens. Yeah, um, which is which is which is probably the best way to have a birthmark. I would say. 
<laughs> for it to just look like a bruise. Because you, you can just be like, oh, yeah, if I can bike, riding a bike. I mean, yeah, no, because then everyone always asks what happened to my foot, and then I have to explain I, to no, them. I think, I think that's the best. You just come up with a story. I could come up with a story. I have a crazy scar on the back of my head, and <laughs> if somebody asks me about it, I just come up with a new story, and I'm like, oh, bear attack, you know. I have a scar right here on my stomach, What's and I used to tell people that I got stabbed, but it's, that's actually not a very funny story to tell people because oh, they, lo- they, they look very like, concerned. Oh yes, they look very well, concerned. And then you have this one and this one, so it does look um, like you got stabbed. I had my gallbladder removed. Oh, fuck. <laughs> How d- why do you need, what What happens in life that you need to go out my um, removed? A gallstone. Okay. Yes. And there's no way to pass it. Um, I'm really not sure, You're but I was pretty sick for <laughs> for several months. So they so gave you an option. They were like, they were like, so we can remove it. And you're like, yeah, take that, do that. I'll do that. Yeah, one. like I didn't know what was wrong until I had a, some tests done, and yeah. they're like, oh, well, you have a gallstone, and it was like right in, in like blocking the, a valve, yeah, basically. The yeah. So they're like, let's just remove it because your gallbladder is kind of one of those. It's like your appendix. You don't yeah. You don't really need it. It hold. It just holds extra extra gall. <laughs> yeah. It just holds the ball. That's what yeah, I'm, I'm super smart, guys. I'm I'm just not as strong as I used to be. No. It just um, hol- it holds bile, right? It does. It holds yeah. bile um between your liver and your stomach, so But you don't need you don't need the holder. No, it's not necessary. I just have to um not eat as greasy of foods basically, which I don't really eat greasy. They were like, "Hey, uh, do you want to have to permanently be more healthy? Cuz <laughs> we'll just we'll do that for you now." <laughs> but that's a crazy like that's a tiny scar. It is. For them to go in. Uh, laser laser surgery. They did it in four incisions. No shit. One, two, three, and four right by my belly button. In the belly button. So, you so know I guess nowadays they can do it in two incisions. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Can you get a refund or anything? I know. <laughs> I mean, that this r- surgery actually really hurt. Though, yeah, I bet. For the little tiny scars. That yeah, you're, I mean, it's your, it's your whole it's your abdominal stomach. thing. It felt like someone kicked me in the stomach for like, a, like five days. Wow. <laughs> Have you ever been kicked in the stomach? P.S. No. Okay. By a chicken. I'm just assuming that's. By a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what else? What is? What are your favorite well, shows then? Now. We're you have we your have foot, my foot out. Foot out I mean, if, as long as you can do it, you may as well put it on the table. Okay. As long as you're doing this. I have really cute feet. I was trying really hard to make this not be like a pervy podcast, but, but now, so it, now it, <laughs> it is. There's no. Here's the thing. My my birthmark is like it's like an Asian thing. It's called a Mongolian blue oh spot. Oh no shit. Okay, wait. And you and you said you are Korean. Yes. The good Korean. <laughs> the good Korean. The yes, South I'm from South, South Korea. Korea. Not very many people escape from North Korea. Yeah, unfortunately. So it's called the. It's called the. It's one more time. It's called a Mongol Mongolian, Mongolian blue spot. Blue spot. Uh, that sounds like a type of pit bull. It does. <laughs> <laughs> God. Mongol- I got myself a Mongolian blue spot. Oh, those are my favorite. <laughs> do you rub its belly? Uh, what do you do? But it used to be a lot bluer when I was younger. It's faded a bit. You know what? Now I'm, now you I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> take a snapshot of this. While well, you while should. This. You should Google it and see how Google bad. Google Mongolian blue spot. See how bad it could have been. It seems like you've done this. Yes. Um. Hang on. Let's just let's put a face to the to the Mongolian blue spot. <laughs> um. Yeah, you. Uh, um, th- I I don't I don't like to get involved in the in the heavy Google stuff. <laughs> Whenever somebody says to Google something, you know that nothing good is going to come from that. I mean, like my whole foot could be blue. Let's just say that. Yeah, or your or or parts of your face. Basically, or like hi- there's a guy in my high school who yeah. who had like a half face. Yeah, because uh, his whole face was a was a uh, was a birthmark. Yeah, that happens with like port wine stains and like people who have the the. Two tone skin, basically. Yeah, uh, 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 that one, like that one model. Yeah, it was so. F- I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the world. That that uh, that I f- was looking that model up yesterday. It was the first time I'd ever seen her. It's uh, it's called um, vitiligo. Yes. That's what Michael Jackson had, supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> he was like, "I'm bleaching my skin. I'm gonna make up a reason." Vitiligo. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I was gonna. Ask you, I was asking you. Yeah. Have you ever waited? Have you ever wait? Have you ever camped out in line for anything in your life? Uh, no. Man. No, there's never been anything that I don't know what it is that about. important is it for the, me. It, is, are we in a are we in a new uh, era of the world, or are porn stars just so cool that they don't need any of that shit? Because <laughs> um, like they, they were camped out all yesterday for Michael Jackson sweatshirts. These guys, really? Yeah. Wow. They were. I they, had, they all had chairs. There's a whole thing. Like I literally just got an iPhone for the first no time shit. like a couple months aren't ago. Aren't you supposed to be in, uh, I'm just going to be racist, but aren't aren't all Asians <laughs> supposed to be on top of the technology game? It took me like 2 years to get on the smartphone train. Wh- what do you mean you were you were you had a flip phone? I was still using Come on. a regular 
phone. Come on. Of, so, of sorts. Yeah. How old? This may be. This may be something to do with the upbringing. How old are your parents? If your parents are <gasps> in their seventies or eighties, my parents are 80s? older. My parents are in their sixties. They're in their sixties. Okay. And they're just not very technologically yeah. inclined. So if you don't, gr- yeah, if you didn't grow up caring that much, like my father, every couple of years is trying to figure out like what computer to buy. Now he wasn't on top ah. of shit, but it, but it but it created this sort of like need to have like the next new thing. Lucky for me, my dad has zero interest in using a computer yeah. or the internet. Oh yeah, that that actually, <laughs> that actually is works good. Out for you. Yeah, it is good. Well. It means I did not have to tell him about porn yeah. until I was ready for it. Yeah, I was think uh, I was thinking about yesterday. Actually, I was thinking about yeah, about how uh, about how my grandma's never gonna find this podcast. Uh, Cause I remember I was talking to her. I was like, I'm going out to LA and Vegas because uh, there's a bunch of people I need to interview uh, out in LA and Vegas, and uh, and she didn't ask any other questions. So I was like, great, because um, she, if anybody's going to judge me, it would be my grandma. Oh yeah, well, yeah, I had that. I had that thought. Um, unfortunately, my my grandma passed. Well, then you're good. You're good to go. <laughs> look on the bright side. But she also would have never found anything on the internet either. Yeah. You know, she's definitely past that generation. Just Googling Mongo- <laughs> Mongolian blue spot, not finding anything. <laughs> said, Grandma, that's not Google. That is a post-it note. What, um, so <laughs> what was I going to, oh, I just, what was I going to ask you? Um, I just had a thing in my head. Now I'm not, oh, what do you think happens when you die? What do I think happens? Yeah. I think that, um, do you think there's a place? Do you think we go somewhere? I don't know if there's a place, but like our energy definitely goes somewhere. Yeah. I like to believe in sort of a reincarnation. Reincarnation, yeah. yeah. That's a uh, that's a that's a that's definitely an Eastern idea. Uh, <laughs> def- I, I, you know, I don't think I uh. think the people that are cutting me off on the highway don't believe in reincarnation for sure. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh, people in the road rage in L.A. I. I got into two very serious road rage incidents oh, shit, my first week mean? back. Do you carry a weapon in the car? I don't. Because you're at not this, at this moment. I don't want to blow anybody's mind. I also don't want to be insulting. But you're not a you're not a huge individual. No, I'm pretty <laughs> small. And like this, the first guy who 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 he he kind of like started following me. Yeah. Um. To like you know flip me off yeah. basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a pretty large. Man, um, I feel like, I feel like it would have the same effect that your your presence would have the same effect uh, to a person with road rage as it would to maybe like a cop. Or from the standpoint of like they pull you over and then you can just like get all sweet and whatever. Well, so right. Like as soon as he saw me, I was like, like what is? He? I was yeah, thinking like to myself, what are you gonna do, bro? Like, are you gonna get out your car and try to fight me yeah, because, fight you, right. like, you know, this is rush hour right. and everyone is gonna see this, like middle-aged tattooed man classic la guy yeah just whooping on a, <laughs> on a, on a small asian girl but no, i think i think seeing a small asian girl would uh would would probably uh deactivate the anger <laughs> a little bit um <laughs> but seeing my face would go the opposite way he would if, he's, if, if whatever you did to this guy i didn't do anything <laughs> that's the thing it was his fault to begin with okay. well that's well th- so th- th- even this morning guy guy basically like i'm i'm accelerating in the left guy gets in while i'm doing that so basically i have no more room to, to whatever so then i uh, so then I'm just so then now I'm on his ass and then later on I end up in the same situation where I can do that to him So I do that to him and then <laughs> and in my head. I just envisioned us This is the thing I always I always think <laughs> I can talk my way out of it So I envisioned us like like pulling over on the side of the road and so anger and I was like Remember when you did that to me Jet <laughs> sir, you know like and, but obviously like he would just get out with a pipe and just hit me in the face And yeah. then I wouldn't get I wouldn't get as much of a conversation in. yeah this guy he, he cut he cut me off in, in a roundabout uh, for, for no absolutely no reason mm. like why are you entering the roundabout at this point anyway because he doesn't care and about anybody else's and life and, 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 and also not ent- even entering your lane but entering my lane yeah. in the roundabout and so I blew my horn at him yeah. and then uh Flipped him off as yeah. I drove by. And Wait, how, let's 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 see your middle. Let's see how intimidating your middle fingers. Oh, it's actually it's a good looking hand. You got a, you got a good middle finger. Yeah, you know I blew my horn and like he he ended up in like a left turn lane and yep. so I drove by him and he had all his windows down waiting for me. To oh. Fl- yeah, so I rolled all my windows down and blew my horn and flipped him off what, and did you and yell he anything? at that point no at that point whipped out of his lane to follow me yeah. and i'm like okay great this guy's gonna follow me now and 
he pulled up on my right and started like yelling at me or yeah. whatever like and i just like looked at him and i smiled and i waved because <laughs> <laughs> i was <laughs> i was talking about road rage with someone else recently yeah. before that and they were like it makes him so mad if you just do that and so i was like okay yeah. let me do this it made him so mad i don't want the energy in my car if something <laughs> happens i'm thinking and they because you know that you when that feeling when somebody wants to pull up next you just like see your fucking face i'm gonna see what they look like and they just like and they're yelling at your window <laughs> and so i'll so i'll either i'll either like pretend to jam out to a song like mm -hmm. i'll just act like it's not even or you j or i'll just or i'll just do the thing where i'm just where i'm just you know uh just very stoic and just looking forward because i know that they're just <laughs> trying to get the energy <laughs> in and i'm just deflecting it and yeah. if you don't look that way you're good yeah so i was like hmm i wonder what this guy is gonna like do that. like is he gonna continue this like i had to like yeah. i had to like get in the lane that he was in so i was like is he gonna oh, move so for gonna, yeah. me so i'm like and he just was looking behind me flipping me <laughs> off and i just smiled and waved some more and yeah. he was like oh yeah <laughs> like <laughs> mocking me and i was like <laughs> oh man i just ruined your day buddy yeah. and it He's wasn't even my fault for a long time he, yeah probably and i'm just thinking of it in a very a humorous way. <laughs> Actually, since you since you are since you are, I don't uh, I don't know uh, what word you're comfortable with, but you are basically celeb status to the, to the <laughs> fact that like he can find you. Like oh, I like, guess he could. I right, never really like, thought about right, like, that. What, what, what if the end? What if? He, but but not even that simple. Like what if at the end of the day, like he ends up finding you on the internet, and then he just angrily. He just grimacingly jerks, jerks off. off <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> a hate <laughs> haterbation. <laughs> Actually, if the more the more people you keep flicking off in traffic, you can create an entire genre of porn, probably where somebody pulls over on the side of the road to yell at you, and then you have sex with them. That could be an entire genre that you become the. Okay, I like this idea. The purveyor of I'm now stealing this <laughs> idea. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> I'll fuck them off, and they pull over to to uh, fight you, and then you just blow yeah, them. Yeah, everyone thing. loves yeah. a good hate fuck. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. One of my favorite stories was a buddy of mine. His dad was a bodybuilder in in like high school. Guy cuts him off, flips him off, because there's this whole thing where it's like, don't flip somebody off unless you have a full tank of gas, because they might follow you. <laughs> so guy, so guy hops off, starts following him. He immediately, so w within like a minute of this guy following, he pulls over on the side of the road. The guy pulls up behind him. By the time guy is the, uh, the guy behind him is in park, my buddy's dad is, is is next to him and thing opens the door, just beats the shit out of him in the road, closes the door, gets back in his car and drives away. It's oh one of my favorite my stories. Goodness. Now I don't have I don't have that kind of inner rage and 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 uh, fight confidence that I would try that. But uh, but in my but in uh, y the amount of people that I've murdered in my mind successfully is off the charts. You ever <laughs> you ever you ever just uh, you see somebody and then you get in the mental fight. Yes. And you're just yes. cutting their throat on the on the thing. You're stabbing them uh, on the on in the elevator. <laughs> yeah, you know I've considered carrying like a baseball bat or something yeah. in my car, but then I'm just like, that's just a really bad idea. Having a baseball <laughs> bat in the car. So yeah, my parents were <laughs> moving, and, and there was like there was a there was like my there was my uh, little league baseball bat. So it's I mean it's tiny, but it's and it's, <laughs> and it's metal. Yeah. Uh, and it's like so it's 26 inches, which because I was a little I was a little nothing kid, and. Uh, and there was that one, and then there was a little wooden one. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one of these just, just to have in the car, or whatever, whatever. Uh, and I was like, I, if I take the metal one, the probability of me hitting somebody with it and then killing them is skyrocketing. So let me, yes. let me take the wood one so that at least, if I, if I ever in, in that situation, God <laughs> forbid, that that I won't, that I won't kill a person. I think it's very, I think we're all capable of killing people. I think that's the problem. It, I think that is true, but you know. That's only because you're only capable of killing another person if you have really good survival instincts, basically. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm just not all about the people in movies and on TV who, who can't defend themselves. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Like, it's your life or theirs. Yeah. Like, it, your life is way more important. That, yeah, that's <laughs> a, uh, yeah, that's a whole that's a whole side argument. I, th <laughs> I think we're in a position now, because I've been, I've been, I've been kind of arguing for anarchy for a little while with friends of mine, because I just... I just think the prison thing is a weird is a weird uh, process, and I think that we would all be better off if there were no laws, in a sense. Because if you're a murderer with no laws, then every time you murder, if I'm going to kill you, I have to win against you. So that there's a risk of me killing you, killing me when I'm trying to kill you, and then all of your friends, no laws, all your friends are going to hear that I killed you, and then they're going to come for me. Whereas now there's laws, and all your friends are just like, well, the law, the law will get him. 
and then murderers get away with whatever, and then we arrest non-murderers and all these things. So in that world, in the world now, we just like, it's illegal to kill, and you just, somebody kills you. You just get murdered. <laughs> but, if, but, it, but in like crazy, you know, like Braveheart, somebody tries to kill you, you kill them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And, I then would if, and then if you easily get killed, you shouldn't have been here anyway. Survival of the fittest. That's what I'm saying. Get rid of all the people with uh, allergies. <laughs> all of the people with, uh, you know, gluten problems. I mean, These people shouldn't have survived. This I've long. had the argument against against Medicare for a little while, okay. but that's not a very popular argument. No, let's hear it. No, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I mean, you know, people people just get old and the natural things happen. Why why are we kind of prolonging that? Why are we and people and and. They're kind of a waste on society. I oh God! <laughs> no, no, that's fine. No, no, no don't worry. No, you know, maybe I'm an ageist. Well, what I think, well, what I think is interesting is, uh, and, and and I found this out personally was when my dog <laughs> got run over by an ambulance. I would have spent any amount of money to keep her uh, comfortable, to get her fixed, all those things. Whereas I was at the doctor a couple of weeks before that, and I and I didn't have health insurance. <laughs> and they were like, sir, you have a hangnail. And I was like, just, <laughs> I'll just, we'll just leave it. It's like anything that I would have had, I wouldn't have spent money on me, but for my dog, I was like, whatever it is to keep him alive. Exactly. But then in the reverse, what happens is when somebody, when the dog gets older, and they're like, look, we can, they have cancer, and we can do the surgery, whatever, whatever. And you're like, you know what, it's a dog, just, just, just put them down. I think we should do that with our grandparents. I think you're not. I think you're not wrong. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I also believe in assisted suicide sure, no, and everything. I'm, I was actually yeah. just talking to somebody recently about Dr. Kevorkian. Yeah. Are you old, you know yeah, you, you remember Dr. Yeah. Kevorkian? I think, and he's just living somewhere out here in California. I think he's is he? Out. Or he I don't. I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot. I don't. I don't remember what happened yeah. to good old Dr. Jack there, people but were, people um, were very upset. But he had the right idea, like, you know, if people are terminally ill and yeah. they choose to to euthanize themselves, yeah. like, I think they should have that right. I think suicide in general is, is a good thing for society, for whatever, because there are circumstances where people are unhappy, and, you know, suicide is not, people just don't, like, have one bad day. And then commit suicide. That's generally true. speaking. I mean, sometimes you're like, Kimberly, you said that, <laughs> and then you do. But <laughs> generally speaking, no. Generally speaking, now let's remove people with 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 crazy like uh, um just like very aggressive uh, mental illnesses. Let's just remove those people for a second, and let's say if you're not happy, and the option is to commit suicide and be. Just be, no, I mean, be nothing. I mean, uh, maybe you believe, you know, if you believe in reincarnation, uh, reincarnation. But uh, it's worse to just be here and unhappy. Life isn't for everybody. It is because you know, then those unhappy people make other people's lives miserable. Right, like that you guy know, in the rotary. That guy should have killed himself a long time what's ago. What's that? The guy who cut you off in the in the. In the <laughs> yes, in the, in yes. The, that guy should have killed himself. Clearly, that long guy had some other issues going on that did not revolve around me. Yeah, that guy should totally <laughs> have killed himself. There's no reason. Uh, but you know, like there's there's lots of people, you know. Those dudes who like go on mass murdering sprees and then yeah. kill themselves. Like, man, why did you not just kill yourself to begin with and yeah. like, not, you know, save save everyone else some heartache? Yeah, there's that. There's definitely that. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a weird one. Is the is the one because and then that's the problem with that sort of belief system is that uh, is that they think that that's the that's the solution is kill everybody in front of me and then I get a free pass to you know to my to my like paradise or whatever. That's a crazy. Uh, there's there's a, there's enough crazy religious ideas floating around that I don't get how that one's sticking sticking in people's heads. That <laughs> that makes sense. You know what I, mean? I I think it's weird that there's hundred foot crosses in in Effingham, Illinois, also. But I th but just the any any strange crazy uh, end of the spectrum on religion is just sort of like uh, uh, dangerous. Yeah, there's that, and uh, like, what about the guy who like got like dumped or cheated on by his ex yeah. his girlfriend and yeah. he's like i'm killing everybody in the name of her in the name it's of like, kimberly yeah i haven't heard of that one but that's uh i like, I like the uh the the uh the infidelity killer i like that uh, the, uh, just a guy who just ends up being a serial killer kills every every girl named kimberly because his, his girl <laughs> cheated on him basically 
Yeah, but I don't know, man. I, I, I've never been cheated on where like I didn't where it was like a total surprise. <laughs> <laughs> where it was like a total like, surprise. Like, I don't know if I've really ever been cheated. Like on. I had like I had some I had something to do with it. Like you <laughs> know what I mean? Like like I was well, neglectful in some way. Like you know, no at least you can you can admit to that. Yeah. Well, and I also think that we're all uh, we're all susceptible to being cheated on. Like, but we're not. We're in a weird place in the world where we don't believe a lot in relationships anyway. And no, so and with you know the social media yeah. and you well, know and people well, have that whole like, well, the next good things around the corner. I have so much access, and we also we also live in crazy uh, overpopulated places. I mean, this is LA. I'm trying to drive down the street. There's so many, like I know that yeah, like like there are hundreds of other people that I'm also gonna want to fuck. I can only imagine that the Tinder game. There's so many. You just turn you just put you turn it on and you swipe it and you're done. <laughs> yeah, you don't uh, you, so you don't you don't get on the Tinder in your personal life. I don't. Um, I actually don't have relations outside of the porn okay, industry. Inter- just, just based on uh, testing yeah. and t- um, like I like to, I like to have sex with people who are regularly yeah. tested and I stuff d- like this that. Is interesting. I was talking about this with um, Jack Spade um, about because he because he brought condoms and like his testing kit mm-hmm. to the to the to the uh, to the episode. Oh yeah. And, um, and I and I've been talking about this for a while, and I always talk try to talk about it on stage, and like normal regular civilian people are not that into this idea, but this idea so um, that that like banging a porn star would be the safest sex you could probably have because I know they were tested last week, whereas just these street hoodlum girls, just these civilian <laughs> girls running around. Right. Haven't been tested. That is the case. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of um, girls in the industry that shoot porn that also escort. And I'm sure that that's part of the appeal to the clients is that they know that the girls who are shooting are regularly tested. Right. Well, and then and then what I found out is that they uh, that the guys that are that are using that service also have to show up with their report card. They have to show up with their. (laughs) Their sexual report card. Exactly, because the girls know what's up, me. and you know, good for them. Like that's totally the smart way to do it. Yeah, bring in your report card, and then we, and then, and then we do it. I, that's mm-hmm. yeah, that's how I that's how I'm gonna try to have sex from now on. Although that <laughs> I guess the, the problem is you're taking out all the things. So like as a dude, like ev- like we're always um, we're always we're always trying to have sex. That's that's our that's, that's our goal. That's pretty much your goal. That's in what life. We, that's what we do. We have a we have a we have a thing that's talking to us all the time, and it's it's not good. <laughs> and so, but the problem is as uh, it, the way relationships are kind of uh, structured is we have to pretend like we're not trying to fuck you for like that's the that's the whole thing. We have to pretend like we oh I didn't know I was gonna and then but we have to also be prepared to the condoms the whole thing. So if if you're like you can't show up with you can't just have it in your pocket ready to go <laughs> and you can't ask her to have it because then now you've planned sex and then you're like well that takes out the spontaneity yeah planned sex is never that fun girls love spontaneity it's a whole thing it's true it's a whole deal it's true i had this guy come and sweep me away from a pool party not too long ago yeah. and that was that was kind of awesome yeah. and then and then he he stopped on the way to run on the way back the to his place no he like stopped in the middle of the the street like oh. reversed a few hundred or a couple hundred feet and um came back with a bouquet of flowers oh yeah oh shit like he saw some lady and she was getting on a bus yeah and so he yeah wait he, wh- what was the lady with the bus lady the had flowers uh, some lady getting on the bus had, fl- had was selling flowers, and so he stopped and he got them for me. <laughs> oh, I was like, great. "Wow!" I like I was already gonna have sex yeah. with you. Like, but now, now you're getting the butthole. Now it's extra. <laughs> there you go. Bring a lady flowers. Get the butthole, guys. Take notes. I've been telling you guys. Take notes. Pay mm-hmm. attention. Also flowers have equal a butthole. A French ha- accent kind of helps. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because uh, I was talking about accents with someone else, and they. Uh, the French one, they uh, they they have a, they have trouble understanding the French one. They do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I kind of it took a little bit to yeah. get used to, but um, I feel like a lot of the European accents are kind of the same. Like I've been hanging out with a friend who's Italian, yeah, and, yeah. and his accent took oh a little God. bit to get to. It's uh, it's my favorite. It's one of my favorites. So like, there's there there are particular words and particular accents that sound so. <laughs> so my buddy Davi Day, shout out Davi Day. He, uh, we worked at a restaurant together ten, twelve years ago, and um, he started working at this restaurant. And it was, and it was, it was an all Italian staff. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I was the white guy there. But I, and I hadn't worked with this guy Davi Day yet. And so out of nowhere, 
after he started working there, Peroni, which is not a great beer. It's Italian it's Italian beer. But mm-hmm. all of a sudden, and we had all the beers, but all of a sudden Peroni was like flying off the shelves. Every time he went out to a table and asked them what they wanted, he'd come back and they wanted Peroni. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I started thinking about it. And I called Davide. I go, Davide, come here. He goes, yes, how are you? How can I help you, Dad? And I go, uh, just, just say Peroni for me. And he goes, Peroni. <laughs> I was like, Oh, fuck. I was like, whatever that is, I want that. Like, that's, he would go to the <laughs> table, he'd be like, we have Heineken, we have Budweiser, we have Peroni. They were like, yes, <laughs> give, yes, give me that. Please just pour that directly into my butthole. I want that. <laughs> so he sold the fuck out of some Peroni. I don't know what those, I don't know what the French one would be. What would be the French word that sounds fantastic? Oh. This is your expertise now. <laughs> That's a that's a good <laughs> one. I don't know. Spot. You are putting me on the spot. That's I don't know. Go. I have not I have not hung out with this French man enough. I'm, to, I'm, uh, to I'm, not, I'm not great at accents. So I, I so I have the um so I have the um I had the French one for a while because there was a guy in my audience and I was just trying to like mimic him. I was like a, I was like a little mockingbird. He would say a thing and I would try to say it back. And the my my key to doing the French accent was to take a take like a a, a normal word and then just kind of they kind of break it into two words almost like English words. I don't have a good example, unfortunately. I was trying to, I was trying to, trying to jog my brain, but I, <laughs> I get nothing. But have a good accent uh, and bring some flowers, and you get the whole bottle. Guys. And offer, offer to cook dinner. He had, he didn't make me dinner yet, yeah. but apparently he's a chef. So yeah, that's that definitely, uh, definitely that is that is a move. Uh, is is you you bring the girl over, you say, listen, come hang out with my puppy. Watch. Well, here's my move: hang, come hang out with Tess. Watch Jeopardy and I'll cook. That's <laughs> and there we go. And then it's oh, done deal. I love Jeopardy. <laughs> Jeopardy's my favorite thing. I haven't watched it since I've been out here. And I was so bummed because it's right. I mean, it's right here. It's Culver City's right here. Uh, and so they weren't filming while yeah. I was here. Aww. I was going to trust. I don't think I would be able to be in the audience and not yell the answers like that. <laughs> Because I've been watching the show so much, and I'm like, uh, Vasco da Gama! Like, I don't think I could be in the... They would have to kick me out of the audience. Sometimes... Do you, do you watch a lot of trivia shows? Because sometimes I feel like I'm only smart because I watch trivia shows. I, like I don't, I don't like that many of them, but I think television made me smarter. Definitely. I think I have way I more mean, reference points from watching TV. I have a lot of reference points from watching TV and from reading books. I yeah. read a lot when I was growing yeah. up. I, I, I don't read truthfully as much as i watch tv so that's how i know definitively <laughs> now luckily m- a lot of movies are based on books so they're giving me some knowledge in a, <laughs> in, a, in, a in a shittier way but yeah so the uh, so uh, yeah sometimes there'll be a reference point but like uh, that was definitely in uh, in the da vinci code that's how i know that that's why so yeah, that's funny. I, yeah, I don't. I don't meet that many people are that are that are that are big Jeopardy people. Jeopardy is my jam. Well, it's it's something I like to watch with my parents. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I c- I'll compete with my parents too. And then it's weird because because uh, then my parents will um, like they'll like compliment each other when they know the answers, which is super funny. <laughs> well, oh, good job, Daniel. Yeah, my 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 parents like to. S- compliment me when I when I get the answers yeah. right maybe <laughs> maybe that's why I feel so smart too my parents they just they just good parents you got good parents <laughs> yeah so wait you, you said you did sit them down and have the porn talk I don't know about I don't know if sitting them down is yeah. the right right wording for that it kind of just came out and in uh, heated, com- heated oh. conversation maybe oh you never wanted to come out there I mean my parents so you and guys I were in an argument. You're like, you know what? We, we, you know what? Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> I'm, that's well, why I do porn. We've kind of struggled a little bit with uh, maybe communication, but it, it's all worked out. Well, how old are you? I'm I'm now 31. <laughs> so that's that's your real age. I got real age. So yeah. th- in LA, especially, uh, what happens is you have somebody their age, and they're like, "Well, I I, I can play between 23 and, and 34." <laughs> uh, I'm like, no, 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 no. How old are you? You fucking weird. So, uh, so no, thank you in for porn, they they don't let us lie. Oh, uh, really? No, nah, not really. What do you mean? Your name isn't even your name. You're not even. Y- I know it's really weird, but every agent that I've ever had has basically been like, "Well, they know how old you are because of your ID," and I'm like, "Well, you can still lie That's to everyone so else." Yeah. Because because I don't know about y'all, but I think I still look like I'm 17. Yeah, what the <laughs> hell? On bit. Saved by the Bell, those guys were all 25, <laughs> and they were supposed to be playing uh, um, uh, high school students. So okay. that doesn't make any sense. But so, okay, uh, so, so sorry. So you, so, so what happened? So you um, came out in conversation. Well, it came out in conversation first with my mom. Um, it was like on the way home, home from the airport. Like, so she had just picked me up yeah. from a trip, and so she was like turning around to send you back. She said she <laughs> no, <was> back. <laughs> we were on the way home, and. She 
my mom is a very concerned mother. Yeah. I'm adopted, so she really wanted sure. me. <laughs> She's really into being a mom. Yeah. And she likes to ask questions about what I'm doing with my yeah. life. And I like to be vague about what I'm doing sure. with my life right. because... Because of what you're doing. Well, doing. yeah, and, you know, before I came out to it, it's not like I could just... Or before I came out to her, it's not like I could just be like, well, you know, I'm having sex on camera, Mom, basically. I've been thinking about applying for this job. <laughs> <laughs> and so then she's concerned that I'm doing worse things than I'm actually doing. Yeah. And then it's just this whole stressful situation. And basically, I just blurted it out. And she was, I was just like, I do porn. And she was like, I know. And I was like, I know you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so okay. that happened. Yeah. And then. Well, what's, what's, so what was the, what's the worst things? Like she just thought you were in like the you were like you were in the like the 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 the, the lower end of the. Well, like I mean, pooped on. Like what is she like? What's the? It's hard to say what she really thought <laughs> I was okay. doing because she, she's also asked if I escort, which I don't escort, yeah. and um, so that's a concern for yeah, her. Sure. She's just concerned about my safety, like yeah. any good parent. Yeah. But um, she probably also didn't know how much money I was making. So yeah. once I told her that, I think that kind of. Oh, she was like, "It's fine." That's, that's <laughs> I don't know about that. She's not really one of those people who's like, oh, well, you know, I get that because yeah. she's a very conservative person. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. She's literally only had sex with my dad. Okay. So we're kind of on opposite ends of the yeah. sexual spectrum. Sure. Well, not, well, not, well, not, op I mean, I guess opposite, opposite, because you, because you obviously have not had sex with your dad. So that is the opposite. <laughs> that, that, that would be correct. <laughs> I have not had sex with my dad. But any, but any number. <laughs> Any number is is probably the opposite of one at this right like like what like there's no there's no infinity so there's no so th that would be <laughs> the opposite of one <laughs> so it's not opposite opposite <laughs> um, no but she's very uh, not into being naked or anything at all? like that really? no no my mom's not uh, a sexually expressive person yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people are like that I I, I played a nudist show in St Louis. And what I found interesting was y you initially think it'll be like, you know, sort of a sexual experience, whatever. Uh, nudists, as, a, as sort of a, uh, an ideology, is just about being comfortable. So mm -hmm. they're just hanging out, and they're just naked. And what I found the most interesting was b when you're naked, you don't ask anybody what they do for a living. You just have, like, normal conversations. When people are wearing clothes, that, that, that's all they care about at the parties. Oh, what do you do? Interesting. Yeah, something, about, something about this, nobody ever asked each other what they did. It was very strange to me. Hmm. I'd like to look into the nudist lifestyle more. Nudist I'm very comfortable cool, with yeah. being naked all the time. Yeah, yeah. It was a very, very interesting thing. And I'm actually, I did the show that I did there. I'm going to try to release a, as an album because they were they were just a fantastic group of people. But my the the best part of the whole thing was I I I, I, I was wearing clothes because <laughs> it doesn't help stand up comedy to be naked. <laughs> and I also talk about sex, and I and I, and I jostle a little bit on stage. <laughs> and I didn't want that to be something. And I air hump a little bit. <laughs> and I didn't want that to be something that was like you know. That would be awkward. And, and, yeah, and it was like an interesting thing because like you know when you're when you're trying to when you're miming sexual intercourse, then then do I then as a performer do I need to uh, do I need to actually get hard to to make the joke work? You know what I mean? So it's like I was like I don't want to. And That's I just a lot didn't of think logistics it, it didn't really think about doesn't help the art form to be naked. So it's like I'm not gonna do it. It just doesn't make sense so it didn't do it but then people were walking up to me they're naked i'm clothed and they're like so is this weird for you <laughs> and i was like no like, i'm the same you guys are naked which is what was advertised you're they, like I is this weird for you that i'm clothed you? yeah like why would i be why would it be weird for me because your dick's out that's, you're that's, like i'm the odd one out here i knew what it was gonna look like <laughs> Although okay. you know everyone pretty much looks the same naked that too like that i don't really true. understand america's hang up with nudity yeah um just everything we because we we were founded as this as this crazy uh christian chunk and uh and really anything that's um I don't, it's 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 very cl everybody's closed off the more I, the more i travel the country the more i realize how important religion is to people and how closed off people are and it's uh it's kind of sad it really is. That's why, honestly, that's why I like being in the porn community because people are way less closed off, yeah. and I just feel way more comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a much easier, it's a just much easier, and it's a much more pragmatic and realistic kind of thing. So I, you know, I've, I've been trying to figure out my relationship status in the world and how I feel about monogamy and open relationships and things like that. And so I made the mistake of. Uh, a little, so now I'm in a, I'm in a thing because I'm talking mostly to porn stars, and they're like, yeah, that's a normal thing, whatever. But then, like, I go if I went to like, 
Missouri and like try to talk about open relationships with people, they're like, well, no, 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 no. What do you know? <laughs> like you just pick somebody and you make it work. And I you know. Do the thing. And, and that seems like, so miserable to me. Like I've really tried monogamy before. Yeah. I've been married. Yeah, I got no married. Shit. Yeah, I got married when I was 18. Okay, so that probably, it might have been more. Yeah. Might have been more about like getting away from my parents sure. than actually getting married. But I thought I was in love. Yeah. I dated the guy for like three months and he proposed yeah. and I was like, yeah, let's do the this. <laughs> You know, it seemed How wonder- long did it last? Um, about I made it. I made it last for about three years. No shit. Um, but I was pretty miserable. He was a uh, very possessive kind yeah. of person. That's the thing I'm, tr- I'm I'm grappling with now, is trying to figure out where jealousy comes from, how how it works, it how to how to remove it. This this dude was insecure, yeah. and also I'm sure he had abandonment issues because at some point in his life like his his dad abandoned him yeah. and then like his mom also abandoned him like at different points yeah. like so he definitely had that those issues I th- um, and I, I th- and I think you're right. I, th- I think one of the things we need to work on as as humans is is being alone um, oh yes like that's being very important alone. like I uh I, I was I I just I go I go see movies alone I go eat alone Me like too. I just like it better and it like freaks people out they're like like go to the movie alone they're like who'd you see the movie with it's like no just i know my mom's like that like the first time i went to go eat dinner or yeah. lunch by myself she was like oh, i'm so sad for you just like picturing you eating by yourself i'm like dinner mom it's okay I'm like, it's <laughs> way better <laughs> it's when like, you go with somebody else now you got much more efficient make a co-decision like look oh i'm gonna get this thing do you, will you have some nachos you're like ah, then you have to like, like have a conversation while yeah. you're eating like maybe i just want to eat some good wa- food and have eat, it be done stare at people think mm-hmm. of think of things b- negative to say in my head about them <laughs> yeah like i uh, i actually had a i had a uh, an ex who uh i would go to the movie i go to movies every tuesday there's a uh, in, in hoboken there's a movie theater there that has like five dollar movies on tuesday as long as i'm gonna see a movie i may as well see it for five dollars instead yeah. of twelve so i go every tuesday i just make it part of my day and she couldn't understand that i was going alone so she kept trying to she would co- she would like get out of work come to the movie I, and I think to try to catch me with somebody, and I'd always be there, front row, my legs on the little metal part, my l- my one little seat, and alone. And she, but every time she'd come in, it'd be like halfway through the movie, and she would just come in, and I was like, "Why are you? He- what are you doing? Why That's are you creepy. here?" And she's <laughs> like, oh, "I just wanted to hang out with you." No, you were trying to catch me. Don't fucking <laughs> lie to me. You're trying to catch me, you're doing something wrong. Uh. I just want to see fucking. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean by myself. I just want to go watch Twilight by myself. There's nothing wrong with that. That's funny because, well, kind of funny because my last um, serious boyfriend, uh, we got caught. Um, Having sex in the movie theater? <laughs> no, oh. no, but we I were we were at the outside. movies and he had a fiance. Oh shit! And did you n- wait? Did you know? Were you aware? Sort of. So you knew. All right. So <laughs> um, <laughs> not. I didn't know at first. Yeah. He told me that he had an ex. I got an ex. Which, like which I believe at this point around. now that it was not an ex. Yeah, I've been in that situation where they're, where, yeah. where somebody's somebody's getting their phone blown up, and uh, and like their their face they're like they're like still Facebook official with somebody. And they're getting their phone blown up, and then they and then they start the relationship with you, and then you're like and then you're like no he's just crazy my ex is just crazy he just keeps calling I'm like no no no. <laughs> He's still your current. I like know. What? That was the thing. I was like, why? Like, how did this happen? You know, about a week into it, she found out about me and she moved, she moved, she quote unquote moved back in. Yeah. And I was like, why is she so crazy? Yeah. I don't get it. And yeah. he's like, oh, no, she's crazy. And I'm like, I'm thinking, um, maybe because she was actually just away on, uh, on work and you were actually yeah. just messing around yeah. with me. <laughs> which, it, which, and this, and this, and this kind of brings me back to this idea of the open thing. And this is, this is the conversation I had with somebody recently. And, our idea was uh, there's going to be situations where you're tempted. And there's going to be people where maybe you're attracted to them, and you and you have this and you have this moment, you and maybe you want to have sex with them. So being in a situation where you can be honest about that with your partner is 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 just the better route to go. It is, and you know, being in this industry, I have no illusions of trying to be in a monogamous relationship yeah. with anybody. Um, I've actually like not really dated anyone in like a year. Yeah. Um, but it gets uh, sour. We get sour. We don't and then uh, this this is the thing I truly believe is that I don't think we are qualified to pick our own mate. A lot of times, I think we no. look for things. I think we uh, we think we found something, and then we get six months in, and we're like, "Why are you exactly like my ex? I don't understand what happened here. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I obviously have don't have enough information." Well, I've I think I've learned right now that um, 
if my gut instinct is to run, I should probably yeah. run. So I've got that down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just be out with no no <laughs> warning. I think, and I think that's the other problem is I think is I think we we try to hang on to something, some kind of investment that we think we've made into a thing, uh, and we try to we try to hang on to that, and yeah. I think we're wrong a lot of times for that. I think it's true also that you know when they say that you can't actually like really be with someone or love someone until you love yourself. Yeah, that's a LL, uh, my one of my favorite LL Cool J lines. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's so <laughs> stupid, but it's uh, it's dark and lovely, sipping on my bubbly. First, you gotta love yourself, then you can love me. Nice. You really do. You need to be all. You need to be all. Be al alone in a room with yourself before you. Before you should be alone in a room with another person. It's true, and I didn't really <laughs> realize or understand what that meant until like maybe the last year yeah. or something. But you know, people who are in relationships and they're like, "Well, you're you're like neglecting me yeah. or this." That's like all made up. Yeah. Made up stuff. That's just like you. No, I was busy. By I'm yourself. trying to advance my career. I was busy for right, like, like people, five minutes. People can have lives that don't like revolve around you as a person yeah. and still love you like 100 yeah. percent or something so then that that's a whole muddled area yeah, so it's like what you know what do you do because you know because especially because we used to be in a position where like you know the 50s rules were g guy goes to work you don't hear from all day he comes home dinner's on the table those and those are the roles and then and then actually somehow that was a more successful system whether it was sexist or not it was a more successful system because both parties knew what they're supposed to do and they stayed within those roles for the most part exactly now we're all capable we all know women are capable of everything <laughs> men are capable of so then it's like then you look at the you look at somebody and a woman looks at, at her boy and she's like what do i even i don't need you for anything i need you for nothing <laughs> right. so what's keeping me in this relationship nothing pretty much it's just like <laughs> That's really funny. Let's um. let's so so to sum up, nobody should ever be with anybody. Uh, kill yourself. <laughs> um, and if you're cute and Asian, you can flick people off in traffic. That's really what <laughs> we what we've accomplished. And if you're Keanu Reeves, stop trying to grow a fucking beard, dude. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> oh my gosh, like it makes me wonder if. <laughs> I could grow a better beard than Keanu Reeves. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so on the, 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 uh, I'm Asian. I can't grow facial hair. In 12 months, we're going we're gonna to check back in on how your beard's going. I can't even grow leg hair. Let oh, <laughs> so that, that's in your benefit for the for society, at least. <laughs> uh, I found some somebody recently uh, who I was talking to, and I found somebody uh, online when I was kind of kind of researching people to bring onto the podcast. Uh, there's, a, there's a girl who, uh, the, the big trend now is, is growing your brush out and growing your armpit hair out. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about this trend? Um, it's it, to each their own. I okay, have I have a bush. <laughs> I have a bush. I can't really. I grew armpit hair. Um, yeah. like when I first came out here first to L.A. Scene? Yeah, because um, ATK shoots a Harry series, okay, and so hilarious. I was like, like I've grown my bush out for them before, like yeah. completely, and uh, I was like, well, maybe I could grow my armpit hair out too, and it was like the tiniest patch of armpit so hair funny. ever. I. I'm so Korean but it's <laughs> when it comes but it's to my but hair. But it's black, so at least you can see it. It is. It's black, but, like, it's the smallest patch, like, you know, and, and like, the bush, too. You know how some, straight hair. some some bushes grow, like, down the thighs and, like, outwards and stuff. I don't have a ton of hairy bush now. <laughs> but mine stays in a very, in a very small patch. <laughs> and um, it's, like, it's, like what some people would trim their bush to look like Basically and it also it also grows into the shape of a heart all that's all that's happening right now is everyone's googling your bush that's <laughs> all that's happening right uh let's we got to wrap up the episode all uh, right. multiple multiple reasons uh i appreciate you coming on this has been incredible thank you uh can how do we follow you if you want to follow you online do you care do you want people to do it exo kitty saya is my twitter and instagram exo handle. kitty saya twitter instagram um do you have a snapchat you want people to do you have like a private snapchat thing that you want to plug um no not really cool. don't get stay away from our own snapchat um, <laughs> check out check out yeah. mongolian uh blue <laughs> mongolian blue spot mongolian blue spot on the internet <laughs> check out heart shaped bush yeah my uh, heart shaped bush which was also a a mashup album between uh the band bush and the band nirvana <laughs> uh, and uh thank you so much for listening uh you you know where to find where to find us because you have please subscribe uh, we'll keep giving you as much content as we can uh this is the stars of people talking. Thank you so much.